the dunk contest, the three-point contest, and also the higher senior stars uh, culminating with the dunk contest. Should be a fantastic night. You ready? Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a fantastic night. These guys are very talented. I'm looking forward to them uh, displaying their talents. Now, last year it was an exciting Green Factory Friday night. Darsh Tucker dunked over Brian Bush, six foot four, dunking over six foot eleven. Uh, do you expect uh, similar props and similar theatrics here tonight? Of course, it's going to be props. I'm interested in what type of creativity they're going to come with. When you think about dunk contests, you think you've seen it all, and then somebody comes with something else, especially in the D League dunk contest. There's been some impressive dunkers in the past. There's been, of course, Dar Tucker. There's been Brent Pentway. There's been uh, James White. These guys have been fantastic, and they've come with things I've never seen before. I know, and that's the thing about the Development League dunk contest. It's a little bit more raw, a little bit more organic than the All-Star Saturday Night Dunk Contest, and that's not to take away from this. Uh, guys can make more chances, don't they? They get a little bit more creative, uh, think a little bit more outside the box. Exactly. Outside the box, creativity. That's why I'm really looking forward to seeing what type of dunks happen tonight. We're glad to have you with us. Uh, we are from Jam Session at Center Court here for All-Star Weekend in Los Angeles. And this event is presented by Hire. Hire is a global leader in home appliances and consumer electronics and the official HD television of the NBA. Here is the order of events here tonight. The Hire shooting stars, 12 players. 11 of them will be playing in the D-League All-Star game on Saturday, split up into four teams. And they will be going through different shooting stations and uh, trying to do it in the uh, fastest amount of time. Then you have the dunk contest, uh, three-point contest as well. Let's talk about the higher shooting stars in terms of the strategy with that, or is it all just about making shots? Oh, yeah, it's about, it's about a lot of things. They have to be creative out there. It's about fundamentals. If you're a good fundamental player, then the shooting stars competition is like the old hot shot. Get in there, knock down shots from a specific part on the floor. Glad to have you with us. Pretty good crowd on hand here at Jam Session. Now, there was a dunk contest before we came on, and the crowd was uh, really whipped up into a frenzy. We expect more of the same here. Uh, our fans filing in as, as we chat here. They're just about ready to start the higher shooting stars. And let's, let's uh, look ahead to the fifth annual NBA Development League All-Star Game presented by Sonicite just for a moment. This is really a preview of that event, the Shooting Stars event. Like I said, 11 of the 12 participants here will be in the D-League All-Star game on Saturday. Oh, yeah. This, these guys deserve everything they get. These guys have worked very hard for the first half of the season. They're talented players. They are on the NBA radar. Yeah. And some of them are on assignment. So, I mean, I wish I had this when I was sitting on the end of Portland's bench just sitting there. I mean, this is a time where you can develop your game, things that you need to work on. Develop it, and then you can do it in this situation. Uh, if you could, give us a couple of prospects that you think are real, real close to getting that call up to the NBA. We see it all the time at the D League Showcase soon after guys get called up. Well, this is another showcase of talent with the Friday night event and also the All Star game on Saturday. Who are, who are two guys you think are real, real close? Well, Courtney Sims has been up and down a lot. He's one of those guys that's right on the edge of, of being there. Um, you also have uh, Pat Ewing Jr. He's been in a couple of camps. He's talented. He's got the father's name, of course. And, uh, that helps, he's right? A, oh, it helps. And he's a great kid. He's a talented player, and he improves every day. Derek Byers is another one that's right there on the edge. He's been up there with uh, a couple of teams. He was the last player of the, of the Chicago Bulls this past year. He's one of those guys that you can keep an eye on, too. Trey Johnson. There's a couple of guys. There's, there's quite a few guys that's been up and down, but they're right on the edge of grabbing a contract. And Derek Byers has been added to the dunk contest field that we will have here tonight. Latavius Williams was going to be in this dunk contest. He is not participating, so it will be Derek Byers. It will be Marcus Blakely, high flyer with the Iowa Energy, summer league with the Los Angeles Clippers. Chris Johnson, who recently got called up by the Portland Trailblazers. I was just speaking with Matthew Brennan of DLeague.com. He thinks Chris Johnson's the pick here tonight. And uh, you also have Dar Tucker, the defending champion. And I tell you, Dar Tucker's not going to lay down. He's going to try to defend his championship here. And I look forward to that dunk contest. It's going to be great. Let's send it to our MC to introduce this event. So 
the Rio Grande Valley Vipers. Also from Marquette University with 18.8 points per game, 45% field goal percentage, and 34 from the three-point line. Please give it up, Jarrell McNeil. Jarrell McNeil. They're the first team that will be up from the Tulsa 76ers and from Oral Roberts University with 11.9 points per game, 45% from field goals, and 35% from three-point range. Give it up for Larry Owens. From the Austin Toros, and playing for the hometown Houston, he's 14.2 points per game and 53% from the field. Give it up for Marcus Huzan. And the fan who's going to have an opportunity to win a 32-inch higher television is Aaron Basco. Now, here are the rules, folks. We're going to have a two-minute countdown clock, a two-minute countdown clock. The first shooter is going to shoot a bank shot. Once he hits that bank shot, he is actually going to turn it over to shooter number two. He then will step back to number four. When we go to number two, number two hits the elbow shot. He now turns it over to number three, who will hit a three-point shot. But he will step back to the number five spot. No one can move until that shot is made. The man from the three-point shot, he shoots it. Once he hits it, he will now move back to the number six spot. But then we go back to number four. He hits that shot. Then we go to number five, and once they both hit it, they all go back to the back, and then they all have to try and shoot to hit this half-court shot. So it's very simple. First shot, bank shot. Second shot, elbow. Third shot, top of the key. Fourth shot, side shot. What do we got? Fifth shot, three-pointer, and a half-quarter at number six. Does everybody understand the rules? What are y'all, public school? I got to go over it again? All right. We'll just watch and learn. Team number one, you're going to be up. That's going to be Jarrell McNeil, Larry Owens, Marcus Huzon. Is the first shot. The question is, does it have to be a bank shot? Huzan misses the first shot, banks that one in, McNeil misses, so a pair of splits to start here for team number one, Larry Owens misses badly, the key is to find a rhythm, you gotta try to step into a shot like it's a regular shot, Huzan from the baseline, Jarrell McNeil, can fill it up, plays for the Rio Grande Valley Vipers. Now Larry Owens from half court, way over the backboard. <laughs> A nice chuckle from Larry. <laughs> Who's on, just missed that banker, here's McNeil. Owens again, almost hit that one. Who's on? Who's on's got nice size, he's a big dude. Oh yeah, he's huge, nice size. I'm sure he's, uh, he's very long, I'm sure he's a pretty good athlete. Oh, he hits a half court shot, Who's on nails it. And we're counting down from two, so you do the math. Team one in round one gets it done in one minute. Not a bad score, Tracy. It's not a bad start. Now, team two has to find some way to find a rhythm. Step into your shot like it's a regular shot in the game. This is not the three-point contest, so you don't have to reserve your legs. Step into it, knock your shot down, next person be ready to go. You're getting fired up. Do you want to step out here, give it a try? I don't know if I'm ready for that one because these guys are ready to go. They're talented. They're warmed up. They're motivated. These guys are all eyes on. Look at the fans. They're ready. So how's your shooting ability with the suit and tie on? 
Because it translates. It, it still translates. That's another another reason why I'm not stepping out on that floor. With the suit and tie, I can't buy a tie. I love it. <laughs> so team two will be Cedric Jackson, Garrett Temple, and Ivan Johnson. And there is Ivan Johnson. He is having a marvelous year with the Erie Bayhawks. Almost 21 points per game, almost eight rebounds per game. When I was a mentor and assistant coach with the Bakersfield Jam, Ivan Johnson was with the Anaheim Arsenal, and he is an animal. He was absolutely killing everybody on the inside. And he has the mentality to go where he's a very tough guy. He's strong. He plays hard. And uh, congratulations to him. He's having a great year. Garrett Temple, number 17 in black. And on the baseline, it is Cedric Jackson. Last year got three different call-ups to the NBA, and he's off with the first bank shot. Cedric Jackson, hit the square, my friend. He does, and they're <laughs> on the board. I think he was a little nervous trying to knock down that short bank shot. Temple hit his without any trouble. Here's Ivan Johnson. Top of key three is good. Cedric Jackson made that baseline J look easy. Here's Garrett Temple. The left wing three. Hit the heel, and it's off. His teammates are ready at the half-court line. Temple hits it. Cedric Jackson, wide to the left. Temple understood what to do on that. Even though he missed a couple of shots, he was stepping into his shot like it was a regular shot. Cedric just off with that shot. Garrett Temple, now Ivan Johnson. They're creeping up on that minute. Put up by team one. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Down to five to beat that score. Ivan Johnson cannot. Here is Cedric Jackson. He cannot. And there it is. So one second and one-tenth of a second different between Team 1 and Team 2. And a heck of a half-court shot right there. Well, they better hope that uh, no one gets it done pretty quickly because I'll tell you what, that was tough from half-court. So team one of McNeil, Owens, and Tuzon made their six shots in exactly one minute. Team two, Cedric Jackson, Garrett Temple, and Ivan Johnson made their six shots in one minute, one second. It doesn't get any closer than that. And now for team three, we've got Walker Russell Jr., a point guard who I like. That man, Otius Jeffers. To me, he's the D-League MVP here at the All-Star break. And then for Maine, number 32, you've got Shea, you've got also Deshaun Sims, and he's running at about an 18 and 8 clip this year. What do you think, though, about Jeffers? I mean, his numbers are off the charts. Iowa's one of the top teams in the league. Is he your uh, first half MVP? Exactly. Jeffers has been a he's been a good player for the last few years. He's another one of those guys that's right on the cusp of being called up. Finished last year with the Utah Jazz. Did Otis Jeffers? And I'm telling you, he and Nick Nurse and Curtis Dinson and Courtney Sims. Nick Nurse being the coach, the other three big players. They've got a factory in Iowa with all the wins they continuously turn out. And they've been good for a few years now. That Iowa energy team are kind of staying together. And, and there are three or four guys on that team that's just a hair away from getting a contract. Otis Jeffers now from the top of the key, missing a couple, hitting on the third opportunity. Walker Russell Jr. made those look easy like he was in his backyard, as did Deshaun Sims. Jeffers off with that three. Here's Russell just off. I mean, they are way ahead of the, of the game right now. Deshaun Sims with the miss. Jeffers missed as well. They've still got plenty of time to beat that best score so far and of one minute. Did. And there it is. Only 37 seconds by Team 3 to knock that baby down. They're by far out in first place. I tell you what, there's, there's a lot of pressure on this poor team to try to get something done. They took care of business that time. Yes. So team two is now eliminated with their score of one minute and one second. They are out. Jackson, Temple, and Johnson, they can have a seat and, and watch along with us for the rest of the night. Uh, team one got it done in a minute. Team three here in 37 seconds. And you see team three right there on our graphic. Now, we tell you about team four. Jeremy Wise, Orion Green, and also Shane Edwards. And Wise is in 24, wearing the jam uniform. Orion Green just got a call up with the New Jersey Nets. He of the Utah Flash. 
right there raising his hand and Shane Edwards from Darvin Ham, New Mexico Thunderbirds. Very athletic player. These, this is a pretty good group right here. Oh, it's a pretty good group, but they're going to really have to get it done between 37 seconds and a minute. Let's see how quick they get there. Speaking of Darvin Ham and the Thunders, Sean Rooks just walked in, tapped me on my shoulder. Good buddy that uh, I played against for many years and also the assistant coach for the Albuquerque team also. And Sean Rooks has uh, been you know, a broadcaster from time to time here on NBA TV as well. Sean's a fantastic guy. Uh, big ups to him. And now, you're right. It, it's, it's, it's all set up for Team 4 here. They got to get this done in less than a minute. That's all there is to it. There's no other alternative. They have to take care of business, especially with these early shots. Knock them down in one. Well, they're, they're off to a fabulous start. Shane Edwards makes it four for four. Wise. Oh, it popped out on him. The lefty fires again and hits. They're making it look easy. Orion Green thought he had that half-court shot down. Shane Edwards off the top of the backboard. Oh, and it is! What a time of 23 seconds by Team 4. No, it's premature. The referee's saying continue. They stopped the clock. I guess it hit the cross up, in, up at the top of the basket, and they didn't count it. So they still... I mean, I'm not sure. Time went off the clock, and now they do hit it. So they're saying it's 36 seconds for Team 4. So that's the best time. With the mix-up, right, they still check, got it done. We're going to check on the timing of that with the official and see if it's 36 or with the clock stoppage there, if they add some time to that. I think they still got it done in less than a minute. That's a possibility. I mean, with the mix-up, to still get it done that quick, that was a great job by that team. Well, to be honest with you, I thought that was the most confident and rhythmic of the four groups, this last one we saw. The key was the early shot. They knocked them down in one shot, then they had plenty of shots at the half-court line. It's a great point. I mean, and to hit that early bank shot, I think it's key. That's the easiest shot out here. And then a little baby baseline J, that, that should be in your sleep, shouldn't it? I don't know. The baby baseline J might be the hardest shot in okay, basketball. Okay, okay, okay. So that one, taking it from a shooter right here, that's the toughest shot I've had to do. You can't shoot that one unless you're fading or moving forward or something like that. A straight up and down, it's tough. I understand. It's, it's sort of that in-between shot. And they're checking with uh, the director of basketball operations with the NBA Development League to see uh, how, how we proceed here. Now, you know, we, we have clock issues. We're counting down instead of counting up. And, and they're, they're forcing us to do math, which is always dicey. But, <laughs> but they're, they're talking with Chris Alpert, uh, official with the NBA Development League, director of basketball operations, and uh, he's going to make the determination here on the time that it took Team 4 to get that done. Well, Chris is a fair guy, so he's going to come up with the right decision here. Nice little huddle up over there. All right, let's listen into our MC for the explanation. By official NBA rules. No, no, no. Team, let me finish. Let me finish. Back, hit, I, hit me. Hit me. <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish. It's your house. Tell him, man. <laughs> if you let me finish. By official NBA rules, if a shot hits the clock, then it is disqualified. But because you, the fans, decide what we do here at center court, we need to know by a round of applause and a big loud cheer if they should be the ones that go on to the second round. Then the fans are spoken. Then the fans have spoken. So the top two teams that are going are team number three of Russell, Jeffers, Tim, 37 seconds, and team number four, Wine, Green, and Edwards of 23 seconds. Team number three. All right, wonderful explanation first. right there by our MC. It'll be team three and team four. So they counted the shot off the shot clock. And the, the fans had no problem with that at all. There was a absolute support for that. So we will see Russell Jefferson Sims against Wise Green and Edwards for the higher shooting star championship. Well, I tell you what, this team right here better find a rhythm early. Hit the early shots in one shot, as we talked about, 
They need to put the pressure on this team because they came out there, they took the pressure, they handled it just fine, and they took care of business. Russell got this team off to a great start in the first round. Let's see if he can do it again. No problem at all. Sims left it short. That one a little bit long. Didn't go down for him. Third time is not the charm. Oh, Sims. a little tight. Deshaun Sims feeling it. Oh, it's taking him five. Now it's going to hopefully for them take him six. No. And he banks it in. Maybe he should have gone to the glass early. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. The glass is not just up there to hold the basket. You got to use it sometimes. Jeffers hits the three. Russell. Now he's struggling with that baseline shot. And I know it lo looks like he's fading slightly, Tracy, like you spoke about. Yeah, it looks like he's fading a little bit to the left. All of his momentum is going towards half court to get back for that half court shot. He needs to stay into his shot. Sims backing out of that shot before it went in. You got to stay with your shot. It's important that you stay with your shot. These guys are going at half court are ready to go. So Jeffers now, they, they need to hit this half court shot quickly. He misses. Oh, Russell just missed. Here is Sims, looking to make amends for all those misses, and that's off. Here's Jeffers. They're beyond a minute here. Past a minute ten, in fact. Sims. And they got to get one of these in a hurry. Here is Jeffers, off to the left. Russell. And it's good. So counting down from 39.4. See, this is the math I was talking about. 21. <laughs> one, 20. One minute and 20 seconds. They actually did better from the half-court line than they did uh, in, in the earlier five shots. Come on, guys. That's the half-court shot you guys work on after the, at the end of the practices. This is for per diem. Come on. You guys are used to shooting these shots. <laughs> they didn't get that message, apparently. So here it is, team four. The best time in round one at 23 seconds. Jeremy Wise, Orion Green, and Shane Edwards. Shane Edwards will fire first. And let's see if they get off to a good rhythm because they really got going the last time. They got going real fast. Shane Edwards, good. Here is Wise. And he's off. And Deshaun Sims is saying, see, that's not the easiest shot. All right, shot two is down. Shot three is down. Top of the key three from Orion Green. Edwards makes shot four. Wise now with that left wing three. And he sets up the half-court shot. They've done all day to make this and win the higher shooting stars. They have all day, but don't take all day. <laughs> Here is Orion Green. Shot that like a free throw. It's off to the left. Shane Edwards off to the right. Here is Wise. Lefty stroke. Orion Green. Oh, he just missed that one. Shane Edwards. Now Wise. Green has been the closest so far. He's uh, right there. Green front rimmed it. Here is Edwards. Orion Green. Shooting that like a jumper in his backyard. Shane Edwards is off. They're creeping up on him in it. And it's good. Jeremy Wise hits the half-court shot. And Team 4, with a time in the second round of one minute, will win the higher shooting stars competition, the second annual version. Well, I'll tell you what, he didn't call bank, but it counts. Congratulations <laughs> to that team. So Jeremy Wise, Orion Green, Shane Edwards, they are your champions of the 2011 higher shooting stars.
witness the higher shooting stars won by Jeremy Wise, Orion Green, and Shane Edwards. And now it's time for the three-point contest. Last year's reigning champion, Andre Ingram, is back. Marcus Landry of Reno. Also, Scotty Reynolds of the Springfield Armor. And Booker Woodcock, who won the three-point competition at the showcase. How do you break down this field? Well, I'll tell you what. It's whoever gets off to a good start. Now, this is a completely different. You got to... Save your legs. Don't jump so much into this shot. The money ball is very important. The players warming up. NBA Development League President Dan Reed will join us shortly. Who's got the look out here, Tracy? You were a shooter back in your day. Who, who do you like out here? Who, like, who looks like they're going to have the flow? I don't know. Maybe, uh, Scotty Reynolds looks like he's knocking down some shots out there. We'll see, but you always have to go with the champion. He's been there first. He won well, which, it last which year. Which one? Ingram or uh, or Booker Woodfox? I'm going to have to go with Ingram, man. I mean, <laughs> just whoever gets the rhythm right away, though. Right. It's very important to get off to a quick start, and you got to knock the money ball down. And now we welcome in NBA Development League President Dan Reed here at Jam Session. Dan, first of all, this is a fantastic event. You've got a nice crowd here at Jam Session. Uh, I, I, you know, there, there was a little wrinkle in the higher shooting stars, but hey, you put it up to a fan vote, and the fans said they wanted that shot off the shot clock to count. Hey, a little controversy never hurts. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're the R&D department for the NBA, so you know, you look at the rules, but look, it's for the fans, so. You put it up to a vote, you let the team roll, and overall, great event. Absolutely, and the thing is, it was quickly resolved, and, uh, you know, it, it, just talk about the fan aspect of, of the NBA Development League, not only with that uh, wrinkle in the higher shooting stars, but really the focus of the league, right? Absolutely. You know, our, our league is about family-friendly, affordable entertainment, so you can come and you watch 20% of NBA players that come out of the league uh, for dollars a ticket up close and personal you get to shake hands with the players you get to get the autographs after the game and look we like to try we like to try new things right we're the R&D department so we have a shorter three minute overtime we have the international goaltending rule uh, we brought horse back to all-star weekend uh, all of these things are we like to have fun and let me ask you about the international goaltending rule that has been implemented in the development league this year Obviously, we've seen it in the international events, and it adds uh, a, a terrific amount of strategy, I think, off of missed free throws and obviously off of missed shots or shots that may eventually go in. But we're here at the break in the first season that you've experimented with this in the uh, development league. What have you heard about it in terms of feedback, and do you like it, Dan? Uh, I personally am a big fan of it. It's been interesting to see it evolve over the year because in the beginning, and Tracy, you'll see this, guys didn't really weren't really trained when the ball is up on the rim you don't want to touch it that's the way you learned as a, as a basketball player in the states as the as the year has gone on you see more and more players go for that strategic tipped off or, or swatted off the rim and it's really interesting to see the play evolve over the course of the year so that's what we wanted to see but overall it's been a big success the three minute overtime has been a big success and overall the league's been a big success yeah. we've, been, we've been breaking records for the number of nba players assigned to play in the d-league 23 teams have sent an NBA player to the D League. That obliterates our previous high. And uh, half of those guys were first round draft picks uh, and five lottery picks. So NBA teams are really using the D League in a big way this year. And you're going to see it in the NBA for years to come. Being a former mentor for you guys, and uh, it was a great experience for me. I wish I had this when I was a youngster, my rookie year. How important do you think it is to have this type of situation for young guys that don't get that opportunity? You know, it's incredibly important. You know, we had our we had our dinner last night for all the participants, and you know, there's 20 guys sitting there, and when you tell them that last year of the 20 players that were here last year, 13 players got called up to the NBA. I mean, that's that's amazing. And if we weren't here, if the D League didn't exist. Those players don't have the opportunity to play in the NBA. Last year, one of the guys who played in our All-Star game was Reggie Williams, who you might know now is, uh, you know, a great player for the Golden State Warriors. So, look, we help develop, we help develop talent, we help find the best basketball talent in the world. We 
getting exposure to the NBA and getting that opportunity. And, you know, 89 NBA players and counting as of today, we keep producing more and more. And, and uh, so we think it's very important, and we want to continue to make it better and better. Dan, we appreciate your time. Obviously, a tremendous event here, Green Factory Friday night. We'll see you tomorrow at the NBA Development League All-Star Game. Absolutely, and thank you guys. You're doing a great job. We'll see you tomorrow. Dan Reed, Development League President here at Jam Session. We've got to take a break. We are coming back with the three-point contest here from Jam Session. This is All-Star Weekend in L.A. We'll be right back. Great job, man. Thanks. Great job. That was fun. Great job, Dan. Everything's going all right? What's up? Everything's great. Everything's great, man. Thanks, man. That's my fault right there. I, I wasn't sure, you know, if we were going to exchange or. No, that was good. Okay, that was good. And we are back at jam session at Center Court here in Los Angeles, California. We're happy to be here for NBA All Star Weekend. Rick Pamela and longtime NBA gunner Tracy Murray courtside for the three-point contest here between Andre Ingram of the Utah Flash, Marcus Landry of the Reno Bighorns, Scotty Reynolds of the Springfield Armor, and Booker Woodbox of the Texas Legends. Of these four guys, who has the combination of stroke, handle, defense, and overall game uh, that would make him the best NBA prospect? Well, you also have to break it down to experience, where they went to school, what type of fundamentals they have also. And all four of them are fabulous players. But I, I think uh, I, I've always liked Scotty Reynolds. And I've always thought that he comes from a good program. He's had opportunities overseas. He's been in camp. I've always liked him as a player. So hopefully he gets an opportunity. Scotty Reynolds, fabulous high school player, three-time player of the year in the Virginia region. And obviously with Villanova, one of the best players in the history of that story program. Jay Wright often referred to him as the face of Villanova basketball and made some weird history. Undrafted after being a first team All-American in his senior year. First time that's happened since the NBA ABA merger back in 76. Well, there's an element that wasn't happening back in 76. And that was the influx of European players or players from outside the country. They're improving around the world, and they're getting opportunities, scouts all over the place. So now that's the element of the unknown. International players coming in, so guys like Scotty Reynolds, who was used to being drafted, now is undrafted. Right, right. And you think of, you know, a lot of the, uh, for lack of a better word, gambles on European players. You know, a team will draft them and stash them, take them 55th, wait on them for a couple of years. And as, as you're doing that, you got a guy like Scotty Reynolds on the board. You think a couple of years ago, you got a guy like Wesley Matthews goes undrafted. Now he's on a full mid-level exception contract with the Portland Trailblazers, and without him, uh, the Brandon Roy absent probably collapses their season. He's keeping them afloat right now. Exactly, and, and these guys are seasoned and ready to go. They went through four years of NCAA basketball at a high level, so they're ready to step in there. But just like you said, sometimes the gamble over there, you never know if they're going to come at all. You know, so that's the gamble you take. So let's send it to the court here with our MC for the introductions of the three-point shootout.
flyweight shooting contest participants. From the Reno Bighorn, and from Wisconsin University, he averages 6.8 points per game. He's 44% from the field, 39 for three point. Give it up for Marcus Landry. From the Springfield Armor, and from Villanova, with 13.7 points per game, 46.3 points, 43% from the field, and 36.5% from three. Give it up, Scotty Reynolds. From the Texas Legends and Creighton University, 12.7 points per game, 46.2 percent from the field, 39.7 percent from three. Give it up for Book Woodma. And from the Utah Flash and from American University, 14 points per game, 45 percent from the field, 46 percent from three. Give it up for Andre Ingram. All right, Marcus, you are the first Andre contestant Ingram, up. The defending champion last year outshot everybody in Dallas. And according to Tracy Murray, he is the favorite, the shooter to beat here in Los Angeles in 2011, almost exactly one year later. Exactly, but he's got to get off to a quick start with that first rack. And there is one rack out here that's full of money balls. You have to catch fire on that one. You can be completely moving slow or out of the competition and hit the whole rack of money balls and be right back in it. And for Marcus Landry, now does he choose where the money ball rack goes? I'm not sure if they choose where it so goes. So I'm being told that the player picks, so he likes that right wing three-point shot. Yeah, you can pick whatever corner to start from. If it was me, I would have picked the the other corner, so I'll know where I'm at by the time I get to all the money balls. Right, right. We will see how it works for Marcus Landry of the Reno Bighorn. Here we go. Landry good with the first. Two in a row. And that money ball does not go, so he's hit two. Got to start knocking down the money balls. It's very important. Two of the money balls. Three. He's having a hard time finding the rhythm, putting them together. You got to put a string of them together. You got to find a rhythm. This is the money ball from the top of the key. It's his second from the left wing, his third. Three in a row from the left wing. Ah, uh, just missed that. Looked like he gave up on that shot a little bit too early. Yes, he didn't finish his shot that time, and, and he had a string going, and it's very important that you concentrate on that money ball. And he's going to get the last shot off in time, but it is short with that money ball. 16 for Marcus Landry in round one. Average score, above average score, where do you put that for Landry? I'm going to put that at average because you have a whole rack of money balls out there. If he really caught fire, on the money, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go on record saying whoever's gonna win this, they gotta get about 25 because of those rack of money balls out there. We are setting up here for Scotty Reynolds. Now Scotty Reynolds has already had an interesting year. Had a very good summer league in Las Vegas with Phoenix. It was cut short by injury. Then signed to play in Italy. Played a few games over there. Just didn't have the heart for it. Came back over here. Was drafted 13th overall by Tulsa. And then traded to Springfield for a number one pick. And now he is here in Los Angeles in the three-point contest. I'll tell you one thing about being overseas. It's tough because you're away from your family. You don't know if you're getting paid over there because sometimes you don't get your money. So, I mean, homesick, it's a big thing when you're over in Europe. So to come back, get traded, and end up
up on another team, and that's tough, but he found a way to get done, get it done and get here to the All-Star game. Back-to-back -back money balls by Reynolds, three in a row, four in a row. That was huge. Reynolds got 11 points. A little flat. He's got 11 already, now 12, now 13. Uh, Scotty Reynolds is pumping it in. It's a little flat at the end, but he found a rhythm. He needs to keep that rhythm, whatever he had before. And the money ball from the left wing is short. He's under 10 seconds here for five shots. First one is up and off. He's got three left after this one. I don't know if he's going to get to that money ball, Tracy. And he is out of time. That shot will not count. So for Scotty Reynolds, did not finish as well as he started. Oh, the official is saying for that last money ball. So 19 for Scotty Reynolds. And that last shot. That last shot was questionable, but it's up to the fans. It's up to the it's fans. It's up to the fans. The D League we, is fan friendly. It man. is. It is. And, and we have found that the, the fans here at Jam Session are in a very good mood. They're in a very <laughs> liberal minded it's mood. Very generous. <laughs> very generous. All right, so Scotty Reynolds is your leader through two shooters in round one at 19 points. Marcus Landry has 16. And here we go with Booker Woodfox of the Texas legend. He's using too much leg. By the time he gets to the other side, the legs are going to be gone. That one popped out on him. Now he's got the money ball rack from the left wing. Hits that one. And hit that one as well. Five for Booker Woodfox. Yeah, this is... A the three-point contest is definitely one of these events where you don't use as much legs. You have to be able to have good upper body strength, high arc on your shot, and be able to stroke it. Sometimes you find your way, maybe sometimes guiding it once you miss a couple of shots. Continue to stroke it, your shot will come. Needed that one right there. Booker Woodfox at 10 points, under 10 seconds to go. He's got to hurry with these. Looks good on that one and that one. And he's going to get this money ball off in time. Oh, and he nailed it. Booker Woodfox with 16. And he came up clutch on that final rack. He's now tied with Marcus Landry, each with 16. Scotty Reynolds with 19, setting the stage for the defending champion, Andre Ingram. Now let's watch, what, let's watch Ingram out there. Let's watch how he shoots and his style of shooting. Is he going to use leg? Is he going to have the proper arc on the shot? Will he find the rhythm? And he's the champion, so let's see what he does. Now, Tracy, talk to me about this. You said that you want to use less legs in a, in a three-point shootout. Well, for Woodfox, the legs, it seemed like it, as the contest went on, he got stronger. Yeah, he's in great shape. He's young, so uh, he has that option. I think if, it, if it was me, I would lose legs. <laughs> it worked out for Booker Woodfox. So they are taking away that shot from Scotty Reynolds, and that's absolutely correct. That, that, I mean, it's one thing to go to the fans and say, should we include the shot? But that's if it's a 50-50 thing. That shot was, was off a good full second after the time it expired. Yeah, and that's the fair thing to do is to take that last rack money ball away. So here is Andre Ingram off with the first and second and third. Andre Ingram 0 for 4 needs that money ball. He has started 0 for 5. Well, Finally a make. Well, one thing that's that's good about it, he's starting off slow, but he has the, the money ball rack at the end. If he catches fire at the end, he can get back in this thing. Well, he's off to a horrible start. In fact, fumbled the ball, costing him a couple of seconds and perhaps a uh, money ball shot here at the end. To me, the easiest three-point shot is the one straight on, and he's not really catching fire up there. Eight here for Andre Ingram. He needs to catch fire immediately. Now, oh, nine popped out on him. There is nine. Off to the right. Needs that money ball, and it's off the front rim. He's under 10 seconds to go. Tracy does not look good. He's got all the money balls here, though. This is a way of getting back in it. If he can put a string of them together. He got that one off. And he did leave a ball on the rack. He gets a hand.
handshake from Utah Flats team owner Brand Anderson and a score of 13 for Andre Ingram. It's very important to get off to a quick start. Not only with your shot physically, but mentally is more important than physically when it comes to shooting your jump shot. And we have a tie. So we're going to have a shoot off. Scotty Reynolds is in the second round or the final round with the 17 points. He's good to go. Marcus Landry and Booker Woodfox will now shoot a, a shoot in to the final round of the three point contest. Each of them with 16 points. Well, this is crucial. Either they can really warm up with this rack and be hot for the rest of the time, or they can wear themselves out with this extra rack. So let's see what happens. Marcus Landry, he got this party started with a 16. Short to start. He's 0 for 2 to start. Finally hits after three misses. Boy, that first rack is crucial. It's a way of getting a rhythm. It's a way of mentally tuning in. And it's hard to get going right after that. Wow, he is catching fire. Oh, from the right wing, he just drills all those money balls. And that's huge right now to, to, to develop a rhythm on the money ball rack. That was great. Marcus Landry now up to 12. He's in pretty good shape here. He's got to pick up the pace just a little bit. If I was Marcus Landry, I would put that money ball rack at the end, though. I needed that one. He stuck on 14 here from the corner. He's at 15. He's at 16. He's at 17. Now the money ball. Oh, it comes out on him. Now, Marcus Landry did upgrade from the 16 in round one. So he puts up a solid score of 17 here. And now Booker Woodfox will have an opportunity, if he beats 17, to head into the final round against Scotty Reynolds. And the question I have for you here, okay, they were tied at 16 through round one. What if Booker Woodfox goes for 17 here in the shoot-in wrinkle of the three-point shootout? Well, they're going to have to find some way to get it done, and that could wear them out. You know, they're going to have to go into a second overtime round here. So Woodfox, he's going to have to take care of business here. Yeah, he is. So it is Booker Woodfox again. He won the three-point shootout at the D-League Showcase on South Padre Island. And Woodfox decided to put the money ball rack as the second rack. Woodfox rings out with the first, hits the second. He's at two. Woodfox hits the money ball. He is at four. He ran into this rack of money balls. Missed the first two. Missed the first three. Woodfox's shot looks like a screwball. It looks like it's going inside out from where we were sitting right here. I don't know if the ball is in front of his face and he's shooting out. And he's, it looks like he's jumping left also. So it's a, it's a weird shot, but it's, going, it's working for him. And Woodfox, he's been good on the money balls here. The score is up to 12 for him. Now 13, now 14, now 15. Woodfox catching fire. He's at 16. And he makes it right there. No, they're saying that that was a two-point shot. His foot was on the line. Yeah, you still have to be conscious of where the line is. And he is in the final round right here. Booker Woodfox is putting on a show here at Jam Session. And that is a nice round right there. 20 for Booker Woodfox. So he eliminates Marcus Landry. And it'll be Booker Woodfox against Scotty Reynolds for the championship here at the three-point shootout on, it, on Dream Factory Friday night. Question. Did, is Woodfox, did he shoot himself out? Did Scotty Reynolds get too cold? We'll see. So let's take a break. We will come back with the thrilling conclusion of the three-point shootout from Dream Factory Friday and I presented by Hire. Sometimes you can get too cold sitting on the side over there. Welcome, everyone.
everybody around the world watching on dleague.com as well as NBA TV. So it's Rick Tamlin, Tracy Murray. We're here courtside at Jam Session. It's, uh, it's center court at Jam Session. And we've got the final of the three-point contest between Scotty Reynolds and Booker Woodfox. And Woodfox is going to fire first. Is that an advantage or a disadvantage? Because he's hot right now. It could be an advantage, but it might be a disadvantage. He uses a lot of leg on this shot, so let's we got to see because he's on, he's, he's on fire. He really is on fire, but he uses a lot of leg, so we got to see what happens. Oh, Scotty's going first. All right, it'll be Scotty Reynolds going first. And uh, as we see, as we, it was Scotty's choice to go first because he had already made it to the final round, and apparently uh, th they're penalizing Booker Woodfox somewhat that he needed that extra session to get here to the final round, so they give the honors to Scotty Reynolds. Now, do you agree with his decision to go first? That may have been a smart move strategically for Scotty Reynolds. Let him sit over there and cool off for a second, and now he gets to put the pressure on Woodfox. underway of the three-point contest. Reynolds off with the first two, hits the third. Good on the fourth. And that money ball was short, so two points here for Scotty Reynolds. I think Scotty Reynolds need to pick up the pace a little bit and find a rhythm. He's guiding it. He's not really shooting it right now. He saw a couple of misses, and he's trying to guide it home. Hit that final money ball, one for five on the all money ball rack, so he is up to four. Struggling again here from the top of the key. Misses the first three, misses the first four. And finally hits with that money ball, raising his score to six. He's gotta catch fire or this contest is over. Well, I think his theory may have backfired here and he was sitting over there getting cold, so that, that's a possibility of what happened. Wow, Scotty Reynolds is struggling here in the final round, only six, and he is running late. He's not gonna get these last two shots off. He did get that one off, but could not get the money ball off. That shot will not count. So Scotty Reynolds is at seven, and the official said that last shot would not go. We did not need a professional wearing a gray jersey <laughs> to tell us that, but we appreciate that. But seven points here for Scotty Reynolds. Now, for Booker Woodfox, I guess the only thing that could trip him up is overconfidence at this point. I mean, you need, you need eight to win the championship here. He should be able to do that in his sleep, <laughs> especially as he gets towards the end of the rack, because that's when he catches fire. So here is Booker Woodfox. And if he nails all five on the first rack, he'll be within one point of Scotty Reynolds. That's how close he is to passing Reynolds and winning this championship. If he hits the first five, he may as well just start bouncing them in. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Woodfox. Hits his second. And Woodfox off to a pretty good start. He's got three points as he heads to the second rack. This is the money ball rack, hits the first, hits the second. Woodbox hits the third, and it is over. Booker Woodbox, like now just put of that money ball, I he, tell you. He's just putting on a show at this point. He is. The trophy is his, and Booker Woodbox now just letting it all hang out. Oh yeah, pull out the left hand, that's what I'm talking about. Going left-handed here, Rasheed Wallace style. <laughs> And uh, it's a good thing he didn't shoot lefty the whole time, otherwise he wouldn't be here in this final round, but he hits the money, money ball. ball. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he must love the texture of that money ball, I tell you. Woodbox is still going with the left hand, and that is it. Booker Woodbox is your three-point contest champion here at Green Factory Friday night with a final round score of 16. Now, what I thought was gonna happen didn't happen. His legs lasted throughout the whole three-point competition, so congratulations to Woodfox. So what does that say about Booker Woodfox of the Texas Legends that uh, he was able to stay straight and strong? And by the way, a final round score of 16 would have been north of 20 had he not taken with the left hand there for the final couple of racks, but what does that say about his athleticism and ability to shoot the rock that he stayed strong for so long? 
and is also a credit to his shape, too. He's in excellent shape. He works at it. He knows his shot, and uh, he does what works for him. Here's Dan Reed, the president of the D League, presenting Booker Woodspot with his trophy. So NBA Development League president Dan Reed presenting Booker Woodspot with the trophy for winning the three-point shootout here on Street Factory Friday night presented by Hire. There is Booker, and so he sw he sweeps the board, wins the three-point shootout at the D-League Showcase on South Padre Island, and comes here to Los Angeles and wins the three-point contest on Three Factory Friday night. So the question is, is he, hands down, far none the best three-point shooter in the D-League? Especially uh, for the competition, three-point competition, yes, he is. That's totally different from three-point shots in the game. So. He is definitely a threat out there. He is one of the best three-point shooters in the league. And uh, for me personally, I had more problems in the three-point contest than I did in the game. Because you're catching it off the catch and it's more of a rhythm. Here you're grabbing it off a rack. So Woodbox did an excellent job of finding a rhythm, grabbing the ball off the rack and knocking it down. And I'm sure it's a lot easier for him in the game catching the ball off the rim. Well, he's been doing it in the games for the Texas Legends this year as well. We're going to take a break, and we are going to come back with the main event, the dunk contest here from Street Factory Friday Night presented by Hire. We'll be right back. center court here at jam session in los angeles we're at the convention center it's right next to staples and we're here for all-star weekend 2011 rick tamla tracy murray this man shot a lot of threes in his nba career and we just watched booker woodbox win the three-point contest now the appetizers were tasty now we get the main course it is the dunk contest featuring marcus blakely also chris johnson dar tucker and Derek Byers. And Derek Byers is a late entry into this dunk contest, replacing Latavius Williams. You know Derek Byers very well. We know he can hit threes. We know he can drop 43 points. We know he's been a D-League All-Star before. But can he dunk? That's remain to be seen. He's a great athlete. I'm not too sure what the creativity is with the, in, the, in the repertoire of uh, Derek Byers, but he's a fantastic kid. He works hard. He's a great player. And hopefully he get his call up. Now, what about Dar Tucker? He's the defending champ. He's got to come up with some new tricks, some new props, some new elements. What do you expect from him here tonight? I expect him to be at his best. He's defending his title. I expect Dar to come with something special. And uh, we're going to see. Yes, we are. Good crowd here at center court at jam session. And the dunk participants are on the floor right now warming up. Uh, let's also talk about Chris Johnson of the Dakota Wizards. Got called up recently by the Portland Trail Blazers. A major shot blocker, a double-double type of guy. Uh, what about his dunking and, and his height? D does his height, you know, restrict him or, or could it impede the voting a little bit or, or not? It could. It could. It, sometimes it works against you. And it really depends on what he brings to the table creatively. If he can do something special, I mean, you see he's long. You see he can probably block shots. But can he get up in the air? move his legs a certain way, create something that will make people jump out of their seats. Now, Marcus Blakely is also in this dunk contest. He's with the Iowa Energy and was with the Los Angeles Clippers at the Summer League in Las Vegas. They liked him enough to sign him to a contract. It, it didn't work out. He didn't end up making the team. But he was known, I mean, he's known for athleticism and blocking shots and getting in passing lanes and getting steals and being that sort of activity type of guy. Seems like his game would translate here to a dunk contest. Oh, of course. When you think of athleticism, it definitely comes to the dunk contest. 
your best athletes in the world can do some special dunks. And I'm looking forward to see what, what Blakely brings to the table. So we are here waiting for the dunk contest. And we're uh, inside of six minutes to this event. And we're going to bring over the director of basketball operations for the NBA Development League, Chris Alpert. And Chris, as we welcome you here courtside, this is a blast. We're, we're having a lot of fun with this. The higher shooting stars had the, as Dan Reed called it, controversy with the uh, hitting the shot clock. And then we had the tie score between a couple of guys in the second round of the three-point contest. So, so talk about some of the machinations of, uh, of uh, these, these things that have popped up in these competitions. I tell you, it's been, it's been a very interesting evening. <laughs> it I've, sure I've has. never seen that before where a ball goes way up in the air, hits the shot clock, and comes down. So at the end of the day, it's, it's the referee's ruling, and that's what we go by. And uh, we have three of our best referees here this yep. weekend. They'll be officiating in our all-star game tomorrow. So, uh, but so far, it's been a great show. Uh, the guys have been really excited. We brought all of our participants in yesterday. We had a nice dinner with them last night, and they were all excited. They were all a little bit travel-weary because some of them played games on Wednesday night. Right. But they got in uh, and all day today. They were really excited about today's event. The All-Star team had practice. Even the, the participants for tonight went over to practice today so they could get some shots up and just experience jam session. And hey, this is great for our players. This is the center of the basketball universe this weekend in Los Angeles. This is the NBA All-Star Weekend, and the NBA Development League is a huge part of it here, Dream Factory Friday night, and then our All-Star game tomorrow. So, you know, we're excited to be here, and, and our players are going to get a chance to showcase their skills tonight and tomorrow. And I, I loved the fact that we had Marcus Landry and Booker Woodfox in a shoot-in. Uh, in between the first round and the final round, there, there was that shoot-in. Uh, was that plan put in place before, or was that uh, an, an ad lib by you, Chris Alpert, here tonight? It, it, there was no ad lib involved whatsoever. Uh, it, 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 this is all by these players and their skills, and uh, it was neat to see. And, and you could see the players' competitive juices get flowing once yes. they get out here on the basketball court. And, and at the end of the day, they want to win. Because uh, yeah, there's some bragging rights that are involved as well, and uh, all these guys know each other. They all played against each other in either AAU, college, in the professional ranks. Some guys have played in our league for a couple years. And, and once they get out here, whether it's the shooting stars competition, the three-point shooting competition, this dunk competition, you watch these guys warming up right now, and, and they're all kind of playing it cool and just kind of going through the motions. But once that first dunk happens, uh, the energy level is going to go up considerably. I just want to know who you got on the dunk contest. I tell you, it's hard. It's hard to go against Jar Tucker, who's who's the returning champion. Uh, he really stole the show last year uh, with his with his dunks, and, and they were phenomenal. And, and some people felt that he should participate in the NBA dunk contest. But but uh, Jar is certainly a phenomenal athlete. He's really had fun with it. Uh, you know, Chris Johnson had a great showing during yep. our showcase. Uh, Marcus Blakely did as well, and and um, uh, Derek Byers, who was a late fill-in. Uh, for Latavius Williams, uh, you know, we expect him to, have to put up a good, good showing as well. So I anticipate that this is going to be the most competitive dunk contest we've had uh, since we uh, started it. And, Chris, I anticipate that tomorrow's Development League All-Star game will be very competitive and, and enhanced by the fact that the, the guys finished playing on Wednesday. They had a travel day Thursday. We're here on Friday. Then they play on Saturday. There have been All-Star games in the past where guys have played Friday night and then flown into that site on Saturday and they maybe didn't have the legs they quite wanted in that all-star game. I think that was a great move to finish up play and have a couple of days to get the guys here. Yeah, and I agree with you. And that was, that was a lot of the thinking going into it because this is really a showcase of our best players in front of the world team. And uh, we want to ensure that our guys were rested. We want to make sure that to, to give them the chance to, to perform the best we felt it was good to, to build in that day or two to, to let them rest and be ready for the game. So, And you look at last year's All-Star game, 13 of the 20 All-Stars from last year wound up getting called up to the NBA. So when we get to that All-Star game tomorrow, 2 o'clock Pacific time, uh, when that ball goes up, you look on the court, you look on the benches, you're going to be probably at least half of those players they're going to get called up to the NBA at some point. And we're going to be telling their stories. That game is going to air live on NBA TV on Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. Pacific time. I'll be on the call of that game with Dennis Scott and Brent Barry. I'm uh, extremely excited about that. Now, in, in terms of, you know, replacements named for the All-Star game, uh, very good news 
for four players who are being replaced. And the good news is they're in the NBA right now. Uh, and I'm talking about, uh, obviously, uh, Mustafa Shakur, Trey Johnson, Davian Dowdell, and unfortunately, Dexter Pittman, uh, he, he's injured right now and can't participate. He is, and, and, and Dexter was really disappointed. You know, he had an injury when he was with Sioux Falls about a week ago, and uh, he had that surgery. Uh, and, and he was really disappointed. Uh, the, the Miami Heat uh, front office was excited that he got yep. selected. Dexter was really honored that he was selected by our coaches to participate in the, in the All-Star game. Uh, so he was disappointed they couldn't be here. He actually thought about still coming out and showing his support. Yeah. But after the surgery, it was best for him to stay home and rest. So um, certainly an opportunity for one of those players that was announced as a replacement. And it just really shows the, the depth of talent that is in the league. And who knows? We'll see tomorrow. The MVP of our game last year, Brian Bush, was a last-minute replacement as well. And he wound up getting called up to the Denver Nuggets for games of last year. And what, what a story for Bush. He got dunked over by Dar Tucker on Green Factory Friday night, helping Dar win the slam dunk championship, then wins All-Star Game MVP, and then, of course, suffers the devastating injury. And, Brian, if you're watching, listening, uh, we're all wishing you well to get back onto the court as soon as possible. But replacing those four gentlemen, Scotty Reynolds, who we just saw here in the three-point contest, Cedric Jackson, who got three call-ups last year, Marcus Landry, who we saw in the three-point contest, and also Jarrell McNeil, uh, who's, who's got a lot of sizzle to his game, doesn't he? He really does. He's a versatile player. He can play both guard spots, and he's really emerged as a player in our league that can score in one-on-one -on -one opportunities. He runs the pick and roll very well, and he's a very good outside shooter as well. So, you know, all four of those guys, we're excited. The coaches did a great job voting in the All-Star. And those are, the, those are the next four guys in. So, uh, you know, they've certainly earned it. Uh, you know, a lot of players in our league have been playing really, really well. Yep. And, uh, you know, w I wish more guys could get into the All-Star game because they're all very deserving. Uh, so hopefully I'm sure those guys will come out and play very well. And, and the other All-Stars that were already selected, I'm sure they're ready to go and ready to put on a good show tomorrow for the, uh, for the Blue League fans out there. We're looking forward to it, Chris. Thank you as always. Thanks, Enjoy Rick. the night. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Tracy. Sure. Appreciate From one it. Chris to the other, let's send it to Chris Miles for the intros of our dunk participants. overall the 2009 NBA draft traded by LA in the 2011 second round draft choice and cast consideration is June 25th of 2009. He registered seven 20 plus scoring efforts nailing 68 three pointers for a Knicks rookie record. His brother Harry is currently with the NFL's Atlanta Falcons. They are six pair of brothers to play in the NBA and the NFL. Please welcome Tony Douglas. was drafted by Indiana in the first round, 10th overall of the 2010 NBA Draft. He completed the best single season free throw percentage, 120 free throws made out of 132 attempted for a 90.9% in program history. He ranked as one of the top 10, top 15 freshman scorers in NCAA and was one of the only two Bulldogs to start all 34 games for Fresno State. Please welcome Paul George. Also an NBA player drafted by the Sacramento Kings with the eighth overall pick in the 1994 draft. Made the NBA all-rookie team in 1994 and 95 season with the Kings. He was known for his aggressive rebounding and defense. He has a career average of 10.5 points, 7.5 rebounds, 1.2 assists in 756 games. Please welcome Brian Grant. and president of basketball operations for the Dallas Mavericks. Give it up for Donnie Nelson. Jerome Williams 
was one of the game's most emotional and animated players and perennial fan favorite throughout his career. He played nine NBA seasons with the Knicks, Pistons, Raptors, and Bulls. He is fifth on all-time Raptors list in rebounds with 1,268 swipes. Give it up for Jerome Williams. These are your judges for the slam dunk competition. See if you can make a jam. You're gonna have two minutes in which to show your stuff. Here we go. So here we go. It's the dunk contest at the 2011 Dream Factory Friday night presented by Higher. Here is Derek Byers with a reverse modified window. Pretty good look right there. Dunk the basketball. DB jumping off of one leg. So 40 on the first dunk for Derek Byers. He got five. He got eights across the board. And here is Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson is long. Ne needs to beef <laughs> up the frame a little bit, doesn't he? He's extremely long. Wow. W was that an attempt at the East Bay funk dunk? And sure looked like it. He threw that ball up in the air and tried to bring it through his leg. Trying to get it, and he got it done, and he did it with ease. And that's because of how long he is and how tall he is. And it's an art to bringing that ball through your legs. You have to bring it through quick. Douglas and Paul George awarding Chris Johnson with 10. That's impressive for a guy that long. A score of 47 to begin here for Chris Johnson. Did you agree with the voting on that one? Well, it was impressive. Uh, I'm not really sure about the voting with that one because he had to do it on the second attempt. If he got it on the first attempt, then I would say go ahead and give him a 47. So here's Marcus Blakely. He's got some slick silver shoes on that I, I'm guessing will enhance the dunking ability, although not on that 360 attempt. Come on, young fella, you gotta get it in. He's trying to be too cool going to the basket. Go on, attack the basket. <laughs> and a 360 one-handed rim rocker. Let's see what the scores are here. I, I'm guessing they will not be as high as Chris Johnson just got. Something about that dunk where he made it look too easy. He's got to put some extra something to it to get more than a 40. So here's Dar Tucker, the defending champion. Last year dunked over Brian Bush. And Dar Tucker in the final round, well, throughout the entire competition, got 50s every single time. Dar Tucker is a shy walker, so we're going to see what he brings to the table this year. thinking about it. Boy, that, that orange just makes him look light, doesn't it? <laughs> a little nervous on that lob. He did not, uh, the folks at home, he did not intend to airball <laughs> that, that bounce off the back. Looking for that corner of the backboard. Looked like he's trying to throw the ball to. And here he goes. Oh, between the legs, Dar Tucker. It That's took a minute. Be 50. That's got to be 50. Up against the corner of the basket, then put it through his legs off the catch. It's got to be a 50. We've got 10s across the board, Tracy Murray. He deserves all 50 of those. That was impressive. Jerome Williams liked that. I think they all liked it. Brian Grant looked like he likes it over there, too. Jerome Williams said that was nice. Good to have the junkyard dog here in the house and in full effect, but... 
not in as much effect as that man, Dar Tucker. Yeah, Dar Tucker was definitely in effect, and he sent a message with his first song. Derek Byers now. Tried the cup jam, missed the first. You get two minutes to complete the dunk. He looked like he tried to tough it and windmill it off the cup. pleased with that effort gave a little primal scream after throwing that one down and he gets nines across the board for a score of 45 and see cb is a great athlete he likes doing a lot of stuff off the run so it's, i'm interested in what he's going to do if he advances so byers had a combined score of 85 and now it's chris johnson he had a 47 on his first dunk attempt. He went between the legs. Let's hope Johnson didn't use his best dunk already. He's got to come with something creative now. He came with something nice the first round. Now he's got to take it up another level. See what he has. Lobbing to himself. Oh, and that was tasty. <laughs> he went up, caught it, swung other side and reversed it. Threw it through with no effort. That was easy, wasn't it? It sure was, and we have nines across the board here. 45 for Chris Johnson, so a score of 92 for Johnson through two dunks. Derek Byers, 85 points through his two dunks, and now it's Marcus Blakely. Basically, he needs a sensational dunk right here to get into the final round. He needs to be in that 48, 49, 50 category right here. And he had, he's, a, he's a great athlete. He has all the tools to do that. Having a little help here. He's got Jeremy Wise of the Bakersfield Jam helping him out, and Blakely says, just throw it off the side of the backboard for me. Well, Looks like he's trying to hit the corner of the side of the backboard. Time is wasting. They got to get it down. They sure do. So here it is. And Wise. I think a little strong with that with that banker. A little drilling in that pad. And here it is. Oh! Blakely went for the windmill, off the catch, couldn't hit it. And he's got approaching a minute one minute to go. Fans on their feet. And oh, he just missed it. I think Jeremy Wise is doing a decent job here with these passes. Sure is. He got the right passes. Like he just didn't put it in. And I spoke too soon. And as I say that, that pass was errant from Jeremy Wise. And he is inside of a minute. Wise to Blakely. And again over his head. They gotta work out the timing here. Clock is ticking down to 40 seconds. Again, you have two minutes to complete the dunk. He needs to find some way to get this basket in right now. This dunk in. And oh, he needs again. to go do something now. Something He needs to leave that dunk alone and go get something right now creative. He's staying with it. Here's another shot. So now Wise will sit and watch as Blakely throws in a windmill jam. Bounce to himself, and that, that's just not going to get the, uh, the the score that he needs to move on. No, that's not going to get it done, especially as easy as he made it look. It didn't look like he really exploded at it, and plus there were so many attempts at the first dunk that it, it kind of takes the wow factor away from him. Blakely kind of went Nate Robinson <laughs> on this dunk contest, didn't he? So he had 40 on the first dunk, 36 on the second a combined score of 76. Unfortunately, Marcus Blakely has been eliminated. So it's Johnson with 92, and it's Byers with 85. And here is Tucker trying to improve on the 50 he had on dunk number one. I'm not sure if that'll get a 50, but probably enough to get him to the second round or the yeah, final round. You just got to get one to go down so you can advance to the second round and do your best dunk. So Jerome looks to be a little undecided. So 41 for Dar Tucker on his second dunk for 91 points. So Chris Johnson with 92 through the first two dunks. And Dar Tucker.
Joker with 91 through the first two dunks. They will be in the final round of the dunk contest here on Dream Factory Friday night. Well, you just get through the first round, which they did. Now you got to come with it. It's winning time now. Dark Tucker will dunk first. Dark Tucker of the New Mexico Thunderbirds. And as we see him prepare for this dunk, talk about him as an NBA prospect. He's a great athlete. You can see he has an NBA body. He, he's, you know, the thing about guys in the D League, it's only a small things that separates them from an NBA player. The D League is to develop those small things and, and make an advance into the NBA. So Dar is one of those guys. Everybody here are one of those guys that is just, just far away from getting an NBA contract. Dark Tucker is taking his time, hasn't even put up a dunk here. He's got to get the bounce just right. This one looks good. Lost the handle. Well, Dar is going first, but he needs to get a good dunk in there to put some pressure. Apply pressure right away. Like a little Jay Rich right there. It did. Dark Tucker with a big smile on his face. Lobs to himself. And misses again. And he's approaching a minute. Well, he's got a he's got a minute. But here again, we got a lot of attempts. He's gonna have to find a way to get something down impressive and still get the wild factor out here. Did that provide the wild factor? That provided the wild factor. Let's see what the, the scores the are. Leg. We've got a nine from Douglas. We've got a nine from George. We've got a 10 from Jerome Williams. A nine from Grant and a nine from Nelson. 46 points for Dar Tucker in his first dunk of the final round. Well, 46 is a good score. It's enough to apply a little bit of pressure on Johnson. Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson dunks scoring 47 and 45 in the first round. And here he goes. Misses on the first two. A little help. Yeah, I'll tell you, he's going to have to go over here to Ron Harper and ask for a little help. Ron Harper was one of the def definitely one of the best dunkers in the dunk contest on Saturday night. So maybe Ron Harper needs to go over there and get in his ear and give him a couple of points. Ron Harper back in his day was filthy, wasn't he? Yes, he sure was. He was one of the... Not only was he one of the best dunkers that's ever, he's one of the best players in the history of the game. Here we go, Johnson, oh, that was nice! That was way better than the dunk we just saw put up and by the, Dar Tucker, and he's gonna get tens across the board! And the angle he came from! He came from underneath the basket, caught it off the bounce, and found some way to get it in there. The angle was important on that dunk. Matthew Brennan of D-League.com told me that Chris Johnson was going to win this dunk contest. He still has work to do. We still have one more dunk from Dar Tucker, but this dunk is special right here. Wow, and it was, he caught it, put it through his legs, but it came from underneath the basket. The angle on that was incredible. Kind of combined the Andre Iguodala dunk when he lost to Nate Robinson with the East Bay Funk dunk of J.R. Ryder. I like that combo platter. Oh, that combo platter was sick. I tell you, that Andre Iguodala dunk was sick, too. Wasn't Didn't it? you think he won that dunk contest? So. No, no slight to Nate, but I, I thought Iguodala won that dunk contest. I love Nate, but I thought Iguodala won that dunk contest also. Now, Dark Tucker jumped over Brian Bush last year in the final round on his final dunk to get a score of 50 and win the slam dunk competition. It looks like Dar's going to do it again here. And it's Shane Edwards, his teammate from the New Mexico Thunderbirds, that he will be dunking over, and Wise is going to oop it to him. Hey, don't hurt the big fella, Dar. <laughs> he's trying to get to the NBA. <laughs> Dar knows he's got to get up a little bit higher than that. And now, he can do it. He's a star. Dar, Dar is taking his time here. It's Jeremy Wise on the lob. Here it is. Oh! oh! Give me a break! He jumped on him that time. He didn't touch him. That didn't was sensational. Have you ever seen an alley-oop dunked over somebody? An alley-oop dunked over a guy that was about 6'8", 6'9", and was standing there, and he didn't touch him. 
So that is a 50 for Dart Tucker when he needed it most. So now it's Chris Johnson with 50 on his first dunk. He needs a 47 or better to win the dunk competition, but he's sweating right now after that 50 jam right there by Dart Tucker. Exactly, but Dart Tucker jumps over his teammate, catches the ball, and he windmills it. A little baby windmill in it inside the basket. That was great. Whose dunk did you like better? Chris Johnson's 50 to start this round or that dunk right there by Dart Tucker? That dunk by Dart Tucker was impressive. Now, Johnson has got to come with something really special here to win this competition. So the clock has started. The countdown on Chris Johnson. The fans are on their feet. Johnson needs a 47 or better to beat Dart Tucker, who is the defending champion. throws it in off the bounce to himself, but I'm not sure that's going to be enough. No, I don't think that was enough to beat Dar Tucker. He caught it off the run. He found a way to kind of windmill it a little bit. I'm not too sure. A 43, so Dar Tucker repeats as dunk champion here at Dream Factory Friday night. i tell you what, that 50 dunk by Dar Tucker put a little extra pressure on Johnson. He was thinking about more creative stuff, and it probably didn't come to him as he was going to dunk. So Dan Reed, NBA Development League president, will present the trophy for the dunk championship once again to New Mexico Thunderbirds guard, Dar Tucker. And what a 50 that was just in the nick of time. Just in the nick of time. Timing is everything. And you got to go ahead and put your best dunk towards the end. And our thanks to the judges, Tony Douglas, Paul George, Brian Grant, Donnie Nelson, and Jerome Williams. Dar Tucker receiving the trophy here from Dan Reed. Well, I, I got to tell you, Tracy, I can't wait to see what he has in store next year. No kidding. I'll tell you, he just seems to get better and better every year. Hopefully, we're not talking to him here next year. Hopefully, we're talking about him in the NBA dunk contest next year. So, so let's get it down to Dan Reed. Dunk happy Friday night, and I think this just shows the talent level in the D League. 20% of all NBA players came out of this league, and you see why. Dan, let's go back. I know we're talking about the slam dunk, but the higher uh, shooting stars as well as the three-point competition, how about those performances? Oh, they were outstanding. Booker Woodfox who won, this, won the three-point contest, and he, he had a little controversy with the, uh, with the higher shooting stars contest, but uh, the best team won. I think it's an outstanding display of the great talent here in the NBA Development League. Fantastic. Let me go over to Dar. Dar, at the end of the day, the pressure was on, and you had no problems performing tonight. Take us through your last dunk. Um, you know, I, uh, I told him I was going to do it, so, you know, I planned on it a little bit, but I never practiced it, though. Like the last time, I just went out and did it. Dar said he did not practice. He did not practice that dunk. He told him they were going to do it. He just went out and did it. So, fans, give it up for your 2011 NBA D League Dream Factory Friday Night Slam Dunk Champion presented by Higher Dar Tucker. So there it is, Dream Factory Friday Night 2011 presented by Hire is in the books. Rick Hamlet, Tracy Murray, happy to have you with us. Hope you enjoyed that. So Dark Tucker wins the dunk contest. Let's rewind and kind of look back on the night here. The higher shooting stars went to the team of Jeremy Wise, Orion Green, and Shane Edwards. How about that? Wise had to oop to Dar Tucker. Shane Edwards got dunked on <laughs> by Dar Tucker. So they had a hand in winning the championship, the shooting stars, and the dunk contest. They had a little team effort there, but uh, congratulations to those guys. They found the rhythm early. The shots were important. The early close shots were important, and it allowed them to take their times on the half-point shot. And they got it done. Jeremy Wise, who lobbed it, uh, victoriously to Dar Tucker in the dunk contest. He hit the half-court shot to win the higher shooting stars for Team 4, Jeremy Wise, Orion Green, and also Shane Edwards. Then you had the three-point competition, which was won by Booker Woodfox, and it's a two-round competition.
specifically. This year it was a two and a half round competition. Woodbox was 16 in round one. He was tied with Landry, beats Landry in the shoot in round. It scored 20 to 17. And then he absolutely obliterated Scotty Reynolds in the final round to win the championship of the three point shootout, sweeping the board, won the showcase three point shootout, and here at Dream Factory Friday night. And what was impressive about that is he shot three point shots, found the rhythm, and sustained it with his condition jumping high off the ground and that's very rare in a three-point contest but he found a way to get it done booker woodbox the three-point champion and char tucker repeats as champion of the slam dunk competition here at dream factory friday night absolutely incredible he had dunks of 50 and 41 in the first round and then 46 and 50 in the second round now last year he went 50 50 50 50 so is he is there some slippage in his game that he didn't have four consecutive 50s here tonight i don't know maybe he was looking up and down that bench seeing who he was dunking against him and maybe he thought he had it easy but i tell you what he turned it up when he had to and you see the judges right there a uh, couple of NBA guys currently, Tony Douglas and Paul George, enjoying what they saw. Also, Brian Grant, the Rasta Monster, Donnie Nelson, and Jerome Williams, a.k.a. the Junkyard Dog. So, Char Tucker repeats as champion of the dunk competition. And now we look ahead to the NBA Development League All-Star Game on Saturday afternoon, featuring the East All-Stars and the West All-Stars. Have you had time to survey those rosters? And uh, do you maybe have a prediction for us right here on who could win the fifth annual G League All-Star Game? Well, I tell you, the rosters look good. Uh, but you have a lot of Iowa energy guys yes, on the you do. same team. So the natural chemistry there may help them win the basketball game. And they are coached by Nick Nurse with the Iowa Energy. This is the third consecutive year that Nick Nurse and his staff are coaching in the D-League All-Star Game. Remember, tune in NBA TV on Saturday afternoon for the D-League All-Star Game, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on NBA TV. And we have Ron Harper right over here. <laughs> like what he saw from Jar Tucker. So, for Tracy Murray, Ron Harper, Chris Miles, all of the judges, and our producer Jason Swain, I'm Rick Kamla, signing off from Dream Factory Friday Night 2011, presented by Hire. We will see you all very, very soon.